Hello and welcome to another installment of Piss Off, the uh, Rhode Island-based comedy show with the uh, old English name. I am your host, Trouble. Hold up. I'm uh, on layer 666 of Candy Crush. Seriously? Dude, I've been on this level for like two months straight, but it's time well spent. Money well wasted. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I'm your host, Michael Crow, and we have a disclaimer for you today. Um, no one should watch this show, as usual, uh, if you are going to be 18. Don't worry, uh, the offensive things we say, we usually find one thing to apologize for. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we'll be uh, apologizing to the Hispanics today. Last week we were pretty offensive. Yeah. It's hard um, to be Hispanic. It is, and the truth hurts, so... So, um, this week I'd like to talk about people who suck, and Keanu Reeves is our topic. You know, I heard that about him, and uh, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of women that were pretty disappointed when that news broke. I know I was. You know, he really just looks like somebody took and smashed him in the forehead with a hammer, and he brings that like he brings that dazed, talentless look to all of his films. It really does. All of his films? All of them. Even Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Uh, and Constantine? Uh, Daily of Still? Devil's Advocate? Johnny Mnemonic? The Lake House? The Matrix? Point Break? Speed? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the same look in every one of those films. They're great movies. He's He finds himself in great roles, yep. but he just... I mean, right now, in this movie, he's going like 80 miles an hour in a school bus. And he's just like, yeah, okay, that's cool, that. I'm nervous. <laughs> but nobody can tell. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, the, what really makes his films great are the scripts yep. and the fact that he's carried by more actors than Xerxes in the movie 300. You need a lot of support for something like that. You do. So yeah, people who suck, Keanu Reeves. So I would like to introduce a new... Um, a new segment tonight. Uh, this one's a little close to my heart. It's called Story Time. Nice. What do you got there? Aesop's Fables? I uh, kind of, sort of. Um, this is a compelling and heartwarming tale entitled Dan's Mom Sees My Cock. <laughs> Once upon a time in the magical land of Northbridge, Massachusetts, where I grew up, there was a night of binge drinking unlike any other with Isaac and Alfred and Al's younger brother. A, cider, a case of cider jack we four had procured and taken it with us through town as we toured. After drinking and walking, we began to head back to Dan's house to settle to bed. What happened next might seem quite remiss, but after unzipping on the road, I did piss. Looking around as my deed it was done, I found up the hill my companions had run. Having nowhere to place my bottle, I hoisted my pants and took off full throttle. I entered the house to the call, locked the door, and made the choice to let my pants hit the floor. Up from the doorway there arose such a clatter that Dan's mother did stir to see what was the matter. <laughs> to, and her smile showed to me she thought Christmas come early. My hands they had slipped to reveal to the girly. What sight was before her for her to behold but one long candy cane and two balls, I am told. So up the stairs with my pants did I dash, after this accidental, inadvertent flash I did flash, as I fled to the bedroom with pants around my knee, to a chorus of what the fuck, to break the revelry. <laughs> the moral of the story, always watch out for Mike's cock. <laughs> that is, that is some good advice right there. It reminds me of the time that you sent me a picture, and I'm thinking to myself, oh great, cool, a picture from Mike, I wonder what this could be. Open that picture up on my phone. Mike's balls. Yeah, it was the brain. Actually, I'd just gotten a cell phone for the first time at that point, um, and I was like, oh, I can take a, the, the, <laughs> the most meaningful thing I could think of to do with my phone was send a picture of my balls to 30 of my friends. Just let them know you're thinking squoze about Squoze <laughs> with, uh, with a caption that said, the brain and fag. That's after it, because everyone had looked at it. That's right. I you look at another man's balls, yep. you're gay. Exactly. Right on. Right on. Awesome, awesome. So, so this week on Trouble's Topic, I would like to talk to you all about lovesick. 
Symptoms of love sickness may include, but are not limited to, hot flashes, cold sweats, weight gain, weight loss, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea of the mouth, unreasonable behavior, labored breathing, depression, intense feeling of anguish, chest pain, rectal bleeding, sudden sense of loss, weakness in the knees, vertigo, burning loins, dry mouth, wet mouth, and uncontrollable urge to strangle someone to death, and a complete break with reality. So be careful. Um, a lot of people talk to me about the uh, how you catch it, like what makes it a disease. And I tell them there are simple things that have been fed to us throughout time about love. Love sick, um, the love bug, a bite from an insect is usually uh, filled with venom or some sort of poison, a toxin. You know, you're an exterminator. Um, the Cupid's arrows. If Cupid's arrows strike you and then you fall in love with the next person you see, clearly his arrows are tipped with some kind of poison. That's, Duh. That sounds true. Right? Yeah, I would say love is kind of poisonous. Right. Um, let's see. Love sick. Love bug. It's, so, just, it's just a bad thing. People have done the stupidest stuff in the world. And all because of love. I know someone who's tearing themselves apart. It makes the person sick. Um, I know other people who waste all of their time, all of their efforts, all of their everything. I have to be careful because the more I get into this, the more I get angry about it. I personally don't love anybody except my daughter and my mother. Uh, everybody else, well, they get love, which is just a nice way of saying I'm your friend. So. Yeah, I do want to say that I did add rectal bleeding to um, to that list of things because I didn't want to exclude the gays. Oh, I didn't even hear you. It was just jib 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 jib. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. Well, that's that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed yeah. to be quick. Um, <laughs> like rectal bleeding. I was love sick once. Yeah. I beat it with Tylenol. I hear that works. I fasted. And then I found that, you know, consuming other broken hearts fills that void. Yeah. So. Right. So, I don't know if there's any moral to that story, but um, we do <laughs> have a disturbing photo time. for you tonight. This one's quite disturbing. Um, oh, this one's a doozy. When I stumbled across this one, I was disturbed. It takes a lot to bother me. Um, that's, that's all clothing they're wearing. It's all fuzzy little bodysuit thing. Fully equipped with a nice bush and chest hair. And if you look right there in the dead center, there's a surprise. Yeah, she's I, uh, she's got quite a muff on her. Yeah. So, I'd be shooing someone away from my stuff. If they were touching my stuff, I'd be like, quit touching that. Apparently that is a father who doesn't mind if his daughter... Um, well, I mean, he's got like a quarter inch of fabric in between his uh, man meat and her hand so you know it would be like um, having your daughter touch your thing through your underwear which is really abnormal. And a quarter inch is the difference between you know kind of weird and felony. Yeah this probably isn't the <laughs> nuclear family right there and um, I, I know it's hard for you to see there but I can see this even the little girl has a little penis there. I'm not <laughs> sure if that is just an oversized clip but um, Dis yeah Disturbing. Very disturbing. disturbing. She, that, that woman has got some nice tits, though, if they look like that under there. I mean, the nipples are off a bit. Like, one's pointing like this, one's pointing like this. It looks like uh, <laughs> it looks like Cookie Monster. But, um, <laughs> but other than that, awesome. a pretty, pretty decent rack. Awesome. So, you know what wicked pisses me off? Uh, stupid Facebook statuses. I hate logging onto Facebook and seeing people like, oh, today my cat shot on the floor. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So? And, um, like... Laundry time. Um, the, yeah, laundry time. You know, not even your friends care if you're doing your laundry unless you're a fucking smelly person and they're like, oh, well, now we can invite him over for dinner. Exactly. That's good. Right on. Just like your Candy Crush status, Mike. I don't have any Candy Crush status. I beat level 666 finally. You know what would be pissing me off? Your motherfucking outfit. Fuck this. 